Again, my name is Rachel Wong. I'm a fourth year undergraduate student at UC Berkeley working with Dr. Kipling Will over here for my senior thesis project called Seeing Spots and Chasing Dots, which is a play on words because I've been chasing physical dots and spots out in the field, as well as virtual dots on the Global Biodiversity Information Facility to help map coccinellity diversity in the Diablo range. So the research I'm presenting today is only from one semester in August all the way into this November, actually. So today I'll be going over a brief project overview, as well as some information from my transec trips on October 7th and November 4th. Then I'll be going into my current results, as well as my next steps for next semester. So why should we study the Diablo Range? As many um, of you know, and it already has been said, the Diablo Range is located in the California Floristic Province, which is one of 25 hotspots for conservation priorities. There are large amounts of endemic plants, animal, and insect species here, and there are current threats such as climate change and land development that are increasing as well, making it an ever important thing to study. And it's also one of the most threatened regions in North America. Sorry. As it is, there's also a lack of published studies about coccinellid species occurrences, both endemic and in general for the Diablo range. And when it comes to conservation efforts for these species, such as protecting overwintering sites and habitat restoration, it requires knowledge of where these species occur. And as it stands, like I said, there's very limited information about the Diablo range species, as well as a lack of preserved specimens to go off of with adequate data attached to it. And so why did I choose to study, oh, it's not going. And so why did I choose to study ladybugs besides them being adorable and my favorite insects? <laughs> um, they comprise 57 genera and 475 species in North America. They're very important predators um, for biological, biological control in natural and agricultural habitats. And a single larva has the capacity to consume 50 to 60 aphids a day. They're also very sensitive to limiting factors, making them important bioindicators. And they're very sensitive to things such as natural enemies, introduced competitors, and anthropogenic influences. On the top here, I included an image of an aggregation of convergent lady beetles or hippodamia convergens. And on the bottom is a convergence larva, actually, consuming a P aphid. Yes. And so now to get into the um, background and overall objective of my project, over the past 30 years, introduced coccinellids have been very successful in increasing their ranges and densities, whereas um, native species have been experiencing very mysterious declines that haven't been well understood. And so far, the published studies that are about these declines have only been about the northeastern United States, and there's been very little information about the West, let alone California and the Diablo Range. Hence, my objective is to identify what species are present in the Diablo Range and to understand their spatial distributions. The overall research question is, what is the current state of coccinellity diversity in California's Diablo Range, in California's Diablo Range? And so this map that I included on the left shows all of the database species occurrences and preserves uh, museum specimens on GBIF in the Diablo range. So there are 1,897 iNaturalist records with only 343 museum specimens. And of these 343 museum specimens, many are classified into an unknown genus, which puts many ecological studies at a disadvantage because there is a lack of historical preserved specimens that can be used with adequate data attached to them, such as species, genus, collection method, locality, elevation, et cetera. And my overall goal, to be honest, is to help build on the knowledge of insect diversity in the Diablo range, which is something very understudied. A lot of problems here. Okay. <laughs> Apologies for AV issues, but 
I have four hypotheses for this study. The first one being that I expect to find more native or I mean, sorry, more non-native or introduced individuals. And this is because of the success of the non-native individuals, as I've mentioned previously. They're increasing their ranges and densities, whereas the native ones are declining. Second, I also hypothesize that there will be more species occurrences and individuals at higher elevations due to the stress of climate change. Since 1880, there has been an increase of one degree Celsius, and species have been found to be shifting their ranges towards higher elevations under the stress of a changing climate. For the third hypothesis, I predict that there should be a higher degree of species occurrences along the west of the Diablo range compared to the east, and this is due to the rain shadow effect where moisture and rainfall are prevented from reaching the other side of a mountain. Hence, there are drier environments on one side compared to the other. And fourth, I predicted that there should be a larger proportion of native species compared to non-natives. Um, and this is expected to rise when traveling from west to east. And this is because the native species are more likely to be adapted to the Mediterranean climate, which would be, which would be more severe in rain shadow areas. And to get into the methodology of my study here, it involved sampling from a transect that was 53 miles long, starting first um, near San Jose, going all the way to Patterson. The site, there are six sites that I sampled from, the first one being near the Blue Oak Ranch Reserve, going up to site two near Ma Mount Hamilton, and going more towards the east. At these six sites, I spent 40 minutes collecting, and additional collection sites included around UC Berkeley, the Blue Oak Ranch Reserve, and Curry Canyon. I also created an iNaturalist project to help expand my reach for biodiversity data in the Diablo Range. The analyses for this project are as follows. I have three different parts here. I'll first be looking at species richness across my sites, the six different sites I talked about on the transect in relation to elevation and longitude. Then I'll be looking at species turnover for the transect. Then I'll be mapping all of the species occurrences for the transect, as well as a, um, a map for the overall Diablo range using not only my collection data, but all of the data from iNaturalist or my iNaturalist project. So here's me, here am I, with my friends collecting at the transect. Um, the first one um, shows me with a sweep net, which is one of the methods I use to collect my specimens. It involves me sweeping a lot of dry grasses. And here um, in the second image is my friend James holding a beet sheet. And what you do is you take a large stick and you hold a sheet underneath a branch and you literally just hit the tree and see what falls into the sheet and you sort your specimens from there. And the third image um, is actually just me hand collecting from a pine tree. And funny enough, we often use snap cap files, but in this instance, we are forced to use Ziploc bags, which would be a funny study or a funny story I can go over later. But these are the three main collection methods that I used for this project. And so here are my overall transect results. The table on the left in blue shows cumulative specimen totals from the transect sites. And the table on the bottom right in green shows species richness and, and individual specimen counts per site. The one name highlighted in red, Coxinella septum punctata, is an introduced species from Europe. So overall, I have a total of 59 specimens just from the transect. And Looking at this table on the bottom right, it's apparent that individual species counts as well as species richness were higher or the highest along the western side of the transect, so along Mount Hamilton and the um, Blue Oak Ranch Reserve, that area, which aligns with my hypothesis. So that was very interesting to see. So overall, I have Coxinella californica, Coxinella septum punctata, Hippodamia convergens, two species of Hyperaspis. Silobora vigenti maculata, Simnus polis, and Stetheris punctum pisipes. Hyperaspis and Simnus were key to genus, and from there, um, species differentiation is a bit more difficult because they are so small, and for that, I will need to dissect the male genitalia and look at that. 
for comparison. So here are my current results from iNaturalist as of November 24th. And this shows all of the ladybugs that everyone has submitted so far. So we have the convergent lady beetle or convergence. Then we have Harmonia axiridis, uh, more Coxinella septum punctata, Cyclonita sanguinea, Silobora vigenti maculata. And on the bottom, I have Trilochorus bipristulatus, the twice struck lady beetle, as well as the California lady beetle. And just like the historical GBIF records has shown, there's been a lack of sampling towards the central and southern parts of the Diablo range, which, which was very interesting to see. So there's just a lot of bias sampling towards the north. So hopefully I can expand my studies towards the southern and central regions. Here are my cumulative project results, which is a very long table. And these are all of my combined results from around Berkeley and UC Berkeley the Blue Oak Ranch Reserve, Curry Canyon, iNaturalist, and my transect. Once again, red represents introduced species. So we have a grand total of 244 specimens and entries that I'm very proud of so far, hopefully more. But right now, um, going down the list again, I have Axion plagiatum, Trilochorus bipustulatus, Coxinella californica, Coxinella septum punctata, Cyclonita sanguinea, Delphestus species, Harmonia axiridis, Hippodamia convergens, two species of Hyperaspis, Salobora vigenti maculata, Simnus polis, and Stethers punctum pisipes, all for a total species richness of 13. Red represents introduced species again, with Trilochorus being from the Paleoarctic region, Septum punctata from Europe, and Axiridis from Asia. And this is what I'm most excited to talk about. But my um, Dr. Will and I found the Festa specimens in Curry Canyon, actually. And on the right here is a map of the Diablo Range boundaries put onto GBIF. And on the left are all of the recorded specimens currently in GBIF. There are only 16 recorded specimens in GBIF, with none previously recorded in the Diablo Range. There are three northern specimens from 2004, 2007, and there's also one with an unknown date. Once again, species for this um, genus are only distinguishable through dissection. But overall, this discovery is very important because they weren't previously seen in the Diablo range before. Nothing has been recorded for this genus. And this discovery is helping to fill in gaps of, no of knowledge about how widespread the range is for Delphestus. So I've been chasing dots visually, virtually, and in person. And instead of just 16, I have collected 34 with Dr. Will, so very happy about that. And so the next steps for my study will include species turnover analyses, species occurrence mapping, and preparing my specimens to be stored in the Essig Museum of Entomology. They will all be point mounted, labeled, etc. And for my species turnover analyses, I'll be going over alpha, gamma, and data diversity. Thank you.